I mean, it's Coach Mike Gooden. Thank you very much for pressing play on the video today. Today's short video is something what you need to know. And when you hear these information, the information I'm going to give you today, please can you share it with somebody who may need to hear what I'm exactly talking about today. You see, I can't remember the exact date, but it would have been about two to three weeks ago we was told that we're able to go back to the gymnasiums because all the health clubs are opening their doors for the public, okay? So obviously this meant that we can go to the gym, lift weights, do cardio, okay, whatever your preference of doing cardio is, you know, interval or steady state, whatever way, whatever goals you're actually after. The thing is this, a lot of people went charging like how a greyhound comes out the box rather than moving like a snail okay and taking their time and getting their self back into the swing of things what you must remember here is that we were 14 to 15 weeks of not really doing the kind of intensity of activity what we was actually normally used to doing by all means, you may have been doing walking and bike riding and uh, running, but probably not at the intensity of what you normally do it. So there's a thing um, in health, fitness and performance, what we call progressive overload. Progressive overload. And what this actually means is there's a lot of different ways how you can uh, define progressive overload. As example... When you are lifting weights, say if I go from doing a, normally I may do say, say 100 kilograms at bench press, doing bench pressing with a barbell, okay? And I may also look at doing a time, a distance over time to do with rowing or maybe to do with um, running. Okay, I may have my markers, what I normally do. If I'm doing bench press and I normally, normally do it at 100 kilograms, I'm going to progressively overload. So the next time I might do it, I might put a 2.5 on one end, 2.5 on the other hand. That makes it now become 105. I'm progressing slowly, or I might put 10 on one end, 10 on the other end. That makes it now 120. I can do the 10 the eight to 10 reps, but guess what? I'm progressively overloading my chest muscles, my arm muscles, and all these muscles involved in this compound movement. Yeah, I'm progressively loading. As for example, if I'm equally overloading on my running, I might have a marker of 8.5 when I'm running. Okay, when I look at the screen, it's on 8.5, okay? I'm now going to overload that and take that speed up to 10.5 or 9.5. And as I'm getting fitter, I'm overloading my body more. Yes, there's a lot of different systems what you can do, which will make you get benefit out of overloading your body. But we're talking about the slow way of progressively overloading. Now, on the realms of strength and conditioning and performance, there's a thing called deloading and the average person what uses a gym they'd have to worry really much about deloading okay or they may have a rest phase okay but the average person who's not involved in performance does not necessarily have to worry about a deloading phase at all okay they may change the phase of the reps what they do the rest what they do depending on intensity yes they may worry about that but the realms of deloading is more to do with strength and conditioning or for some form of sport where you're needing the realms of doing periodization. All right? So, as I said, I heard a lot of people on about, they went straight back into the gym and they went back to what they started doing. And also I heard a lot of people say they went back to what they were doing and they end up very sore very tired, okay, some of them with some injuries, okay, so, 
overloading, progressive overloading has stood the test of time. Okay? Progressive overloading has stood the test of time. So, if you're new to training, if you're quite experienced at training, remember that one thing. Progressive overload. It stood the test of time and it works. Okay? The other realms okay, of deloading is something what you don't have to really worry about unless you're heavily involved in periodization or strength and conditioning or some sport what demands that you have to deload um, your intensity or the type of volume what you're actually doing. All right. I hope this short video has helped. Remember, take your time, build yourself up. As you're doing it, build yourself up. Challenge yourself with each step as you're moving along. And remember, sometimes go back to that place where you actually started so you can see how much you've progressed. And the point I'm getting at here as well is what a lot of people don't do. Carry a journal of each training session what you have. You know, you can get these books from the pan shop. And what you do is write in your workouts, write in your reps, write in your rest writing the amount of weight what you did writing the amount of uh, meters you did if you were running or using the row machine and you will see that you can see that you're overloading yourself and you are progressing all right thank you for pressing play my name is coach martin good remember share this video with somebody who actually needs it because i'm fed up of people causing injuries okay being demotivated for the fact that they are not progressively overloading. Have a great day, have a great week. Bye for now.